a real important defense. I think we were much more, more secure when there were a million ISPs in the world than when there were a hundred. It's simply by dispersing the targets. And the last thing is assurance. That we really need research in. We need research in software assurance. Something very difficult. But being able to determine that a program we use does what we think it does and nothing else. I mean, those are the, some of the tech solutions, and, and they're real and they're important, but primarily this is a political problem. And right? inside the U.S., this is a political problem. I don't know if people saw the, uh, in a hotel, we had the International New York, New York Times at, at breakfast, and one of, the, one of the front page headlines was that Snowden, it was kind of like Snowden stories are harming U.S. business. Really interesting headline, it wasn't NSA actions harming U.S. business. Which, which you could equally have written that headline. It was the fact that you know about them, not that we did them. And, and the problem is, as you'd imagine, a lot of customers, especially international, don't trust U.S. companies, don't trust their security. And uh, the Microsoft is, user is losing business, uh, Cisco is losing business, IBM is losing business, U.S. cloud security companies are losing business. I mean, all of these companies have talked about businesses they are losing because the world doesn't believe that U.S. products are secure. They come, they come with NSA door, back doors built in. I mean, this, is a, this is a perfectly reasonable fear, uh, and it is, it is another one of the harms. That even with all of these tech solutions, we cannot be assured that they are being implemented properly. Right? There's, a, there's a large uh, resurgence right now of ephemeral apps. Your kids all probably use them. And these are chat apps. And the problem, of course, with using Facebook is that your stuff stays on there forever. And if you're a high school kid, this can be a social disaster. So, you know, kids are gravitating towards apps that delete things after 10 seconds, a minute. The problem is, of course, that how do you know they actually do? And if the NSA went to any of these companies and said, you have to save all of these chats and then lie about it, the company has to comply. And, and the worst thing is that, that is, what I just said is not a paranoid fantasy. We know this has happened in other cases, in companies large and small. Small company is Lavabit. Lavabit was a secure email provider. Provided email for a couple of a couple of ten thousand users, including Edward Snowden. The government at one point uh, last year went to Lavabit and said, "We we need to read the traffic of this person." Lavabit founder and programmer said, "I can't give it to you. This is the way it's designed. We don't know communications. We don't have the keys. Sorry." Uh, the government said, "That's not good enough. Uh, you must do it." get back and forth, uh, government went to the court, uh, and eventually got a demand for LavaBit's master public key. Sorry, ma master, master private key. Basically the key to all of its users. LavaBit said, you can't possibly be serious, this compromises everybody. The court said, yes we are. LavaBit complied by giving them the key printed out in like three point type. The court said, that's not funny. <laughs> and uh, in response, Lavabit closed down its service. <clears throat> My interesting story, I mean, the, the, the takeaways there is that the U.S. government is perfectly willing to compromise the security of everybody to get one person. And the only option Lavabit had to defend themselves is unavailable to most other companies, and that's to shut themselves down. And Facebook is not going to shut itself down in response to a U.S. government request, even if they don't like it. The big company example we have is Microsoft. When uh, when Skype was first uh, first appeared, we knew it had end-to-end -end security that no one in the middle, no one at Skype could eavesdrop on your, your phone calls and video calls because they were encrypted from your computer to the person you're talking to's computer. Right? Clean, easy, well done encryption, 
no ability to you drop in the middle. Skype is independent. Skype's purchased by eBay. No one knows why. eBay realizes it doesn't know why. eBay sells to Microsoft. Uh, at some point in that process, uh, Microsoft makes changes to Skype to make it more eavesdropping friendly. We don't know what they are. It's still unknown what changes were made, but they did change how Skype works to make it easier to eavesdrop, and then didn't tell us about it. Presumably, it's the same sort of thing that happens a lot of it, except that Microsoft did what they had to do, given how big they are, which was comply. So this is a problem. This, the, and the problem is really interesting. And the problem is that no matter how good our technology is, we are fundamentally trusting companies to implement that technology properly. We're trusting software vendors, we're trusting hardware vendors, trusting networking software. And we're now in a world where we have no reason to trust. And this puts us in a bind in a lot of cases. And unfortunately for a lot of, of people, this means they end up accepting NSA surveillance. Right? You've got to buy networking hardware from somebody. Cisco is owned by the NSA. The alternative right, is a Chinese-made switch that's owned by China. Right? Sort, of, sort of pick your enemy here. And for a lot of people, as enemies go, the U.S. is probably a pretty benign one. Right, this is bad. This means, and I'm afraid this is, might be true, is that we're not going to get a lot of fixes because there is going to be this sort of real politic analysis in most cases instead of the kind of outrage that I think we should have. So that's what I think the lessons of 2013 are. The lesson of 2013 is that uh, the Internet's a giant surveillance platform, the NSA and others taking advantage of it. Fixing it is technically possible, but politically very, very difficult. And a lot of our notions of security are really no longer applicable because they're based on flawed notions of how the internet works. So with that, I'm happy to take questions.